Hello, my friends. Whether you're trying to become an instructional designer or you've been doing it for years, one of the best ways that you can increase your productivity and get more done in less time is to upgrade whatever computer or laptop it is that you're using. So that's why in this video, we're going to dive into the best laptops for instructional designers. So welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Devlin Peck and I help instructional designers like you learn new skills and land opportunities. And like we mentioned, we don't want your computer or your laptop to be holding you back from upskilling or to be slowing you down once you do land those opportunities. So that's why um, I'm not just going to share a few laptop models that are really good right now, but I'm also going to dive into all the technical specifications and what they mean so that when you're shopping for a laptop or even building a desktop computer from scratch, you know what to look for and you know what will work uh, for instructional design tasks specifically. So that's where we'll start. We will dive into the technical specs just so you know what everything means. So we're going to dive into the processor, the RAM, the storage, the graphics card, the screen size, the battery life and the web webcam. These are the main considerations. I'm sure there are others. If there's something else you have a question about that you don't see on here, let us know in the comments and I'm sure myself and the community can help you out. So first things first is the processor or the CPU. Um, this is basically the brain of your entire computer. So it runs all of the calculations. It, it tells everything else what to do. If your processor is slow, it's going to slow down everything else. So Generally speaking, fr faster processors will make your computer zippier. And if, if other components are too slow, it could, still, it could still be slow. So just because your computer is running slowly, it doesn't necessarily mean it is the processor. But if your processor is not fast, nothing else is going to be fast either. That's one way to think about it. So we don't want this to be a limiting factor. Now, there are two main brands here, um, Intel and AMD. Okay, so we're not going to dive too deep into all the different models, but... At the minimum, you'd probably want to get an Intel i5, and then it goes up like i7, i9. So the higher, the better with those Intel chips generally. And then if you're going with an, an, an AMD machine, you want to get at minimum a Ryzen 5, and those numbers go up as well. So keep an eye on the processors. Um, recommended is the Intel i7 or the Ryzen 7. That would be better. So aim for these. But if, if the machine you're looking at has one of these five ones, i5 or the Ryzen 5, you'll be okay. But obviously, if you can, if you want your machine to be a bit more future proofed, if you want to do a little bit heavier um, work, then the i7 or Ryzen 7 would be good as well. But if you're just working in like e-learning authoring tools and some light uh, video and photo editing, i5 and Ryzen 5 will be great. And now if you're looking at the newer Apple devices, like that started coming out in 2020, any of the M1, there's the M2 chip now, there's like M1 Pro, I think. Any of those M1 or beyond chips are amazing. They're going to do, they're going to go above and beyond for any kind of instructional design or editing tasks. They're really, really powerful. So if you're looking at newer Apple devices, see if it has the M1 or beyond chip. If it does, you're going to have a really strong processor in that laptop. All right, so now let's move on to RAM. So this is essentially the short-term memory of your computer. Um, it, the long name for it is random access memory. And it essentially lets you do more things at once without your computer slowing down. So if you want to have open like 20 Chrome tabs, if you want to have open Articulate Storyline and Adobe Illustrator, maybe even a video editor as well, you can do all of that if you have a lot of RAM and they're all going to run just as quickly as the other programs. So... Um, yeah, RAM is really helpful to have because you don't want to have to like close down programs to open up other ones without your machine slowing down. That That's no fun. I mean, at least if you're like me, I have so much open at once usually. Um, so eight gigabytes of RAM is like the absolute minimum, but I would highly recommend going for 16 gigabytes of RAM if possible. So some, some machines can work better with that eight gigabytes of RAM than others. So again, you can get by with eight gigs. You'll still be able to do multiple things at once without any trouble. But if you really don't want to have to worry about it, then 16 gigabytes of RAM or beyond is a pretty safe, safe way to go. Okay, now moving on to storage. This is not to be confused with RAM. RAM generally seeing like eight, 16, 32 gigabyte options, but storage is, is going to be much bigger options, like starting at generally 256 gigs. But Storage essentially determines how many files you can store on your computer. So when you're like saving video files, saving audio, saving Word documents, all of that adds up. Um, 
you're all probably familiar with this, like on your phone, you decide how much storage to get when you're purchasing a new phone. It's the same idea here. But the, the big difference and the thing that you should really be aware of is whether the storage is a solid state drive or a hard disk drive. So SSD is the one you want. SSDs, which are the newer technology, they can read and write files so much faster. So if you if you don't want to be like waiting forever to copy a, a, a big video file over from one folder to another, for example, then you're going to want a solid state drive. They are more expensive. They are the norm these days. But if you see like a, a deal that looks like really, really good, see if it has a hard disk drive because that is going to slow down your workflow. Um, solid state drives essentially give you that like under 30 second startup time. You don't have to wait as long for new programs to install. You don't need to wait as long to copy files from one place to another. Um, so I highly, highly recommend getting a solid state drive. I would not recommend purchasing a computer that doesn't have an, an SSD in this day and age. Um, some laptops kind of want to combine the best of both worlds. So they'll have like a, a smaller solid state drive, like a 256 gigabyte SSD and like a one terabyte hard disk drive. So that way you can like store the files you use less often on that hard disk drive. And then all the stuff you use more frequently, you can keep on the SSD. So that's not a terrible option. Just make sure if you are using that approach, put all of the files that you access most often on the SSD. And a lot of the times the, those type of computers have, um, have software in place to kind of move those things around for you. So 256 gig gigabytes, I would recommend as the absolute minimum. If you want to be more comfortable, aim for one terabyte, but one terabyte um, solid state drives can be kind of expensive. It's not the norm for, for them to come with that. So it's probably going to be anywhere. It's like a $400 upcharge to get that full one terabyte. And that's not the end of the world because there are external storage options. So you could get... Um, yeah, an external solid state drive that is like up to two terabytes for relatively cheap. You just have to plug it into your computer basically to transfer the files over. Um, and then, then there's also cloud storage like um, iCloud Drive, Google, Google Drive, Dropbox. If you have like uh, video files or something that you don't want just sitting on your computer taking up space, you can upload them to the cloud and then delete them from your computer. And you know that they're there when you need them, but um, you don't need to spend an extra 400 bucks for that storage on your actual machine. All right, onto the graphics card and GPU. This can get kind of complex. We don't need to spend too much time on this. Um, but the graphics cards are essentially mini computers that are their whole purpose is to deal with graphics and media and any kind of visual intensive stuff. So dedicated graphics cards are way more powerful generally than integrated graphics cards. And that's because dedicated dedicated whoa, dedicated graphics cards they're, they are actually their own mini computers. They have their own CPU or processor. They have their own RAM. Um, so it's like a little computer running alongside your computer that deals with all the graphics tasks. Most laptops don't have dedicated graphics, only ones that are very like high-end kind of work, you know, um, more production-focused laptops will have dedicated graphics. If you're looking at machines without dedicated graphics, don't worry about it. Most of them will be integrated. Most of an integrated graphics uh, will be just fine for most ID tasks. That just means it uses the, the same RAM and same processor as all of the other tasks on the computer do, which is generally sufficient. But for any like really intense gaming or VR work, for VR work, especially if you're doing any kind of intense VR work, you're going to want a dedicated graphics card. So there it is. You don't need to focus too much on this unless you do know you're going to do that really intensive work. Then I would probably suggest keeping a closer eye on what kind of uh, GPU you're getting or graphics card you're getting. Okay, screen size. So that's all the real technical stuff. This gets a little bit less technical. For screen size, 13 inch screen, absolute minimum I would recommend. But even then, if you really want to increase your productivity, I would recommend getting an external monitor. And I'll link to the monitors I use. They're 27 inches. They have like this like eye care feature. They're relatively affordable. I have a couple of them, but even even if even one of them with a 13 inch laptop would would really multiply your productivity. If nothing else, get an external monitor that will help so much with how much you can get done in a, in the same amount of time. Um, if you're not if you're not gonna have an external monitor, if you just don't have the space for it or 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 whatever it is. 15 inch plus screen is probably a safe idea just so you do have more screen real estate for when you're working in these programs with all the different like uh, task bars and timelines and, and menus and all of that. So people do work just fine on 13 inch monitors, but if you can get 15 inches or more, that will be um, helping your productivity. And then 
as far as the resolution goes, 1080p is a good minimum. So that's like 1920 by 1080. I, I think I can't imagine anyone is selling laptops with a lower resolution than that. But if you do plan to work with like 4K assets and do 4K video work, then 4K monitor couldn't hurt. And then if you're doing color sensitive work, there are also some things you can look at, particularly the Adobe sRGB rating or just the RGB rating. Um, that will tell you how like um, consistent the colors are with what they're supposed to be. And I've, I've heard there's some kind of like, um, like there's some work you need to do up front, like once you unbox it to kind of make sure that the ratings are accurate. I haven't ever gotten too deep into that. I don't think it's super important for ID work, but something to keep in mind if you are doing um, color sensitive work. All right, on to battery life. Um, not too much decision making you need to do here. The standard is between eight and 20 hours, which should be most for, you know, getting a day's work done before you need to charge it again. But if you will be on the go a lot, that is something to keep in mind. You may want to aim for more battery life. Um, but there are also external batteries. So if you're, if you're running low or you're, you're worried about it, you could probably get an external battery for as little as like a hundred bucks. That could give you like at least four more hours, I would imagine. It's just something else you need to bring with you, which is no fun, but there are options just like there are for the storage. And then finally, the, the webcam. So there, are, this is like a trend I've seen in the laptop market where they kind of put the keyboard like at the bottom of the screen, right above the keyboard. So it kind of gives this like up your nose effect when you're on, on calls. And um, as instructional designers, we are generally on a lot of calls with subject matter experts, potential clients, other stakeholders. So you wanna, you wanna make sure you're presentable. Um, yeah, so the camera angle is one thing to keep in mind. The other piece is the quality. A lot of laptops have 720p quality, which is not very good. So if you can get a machine with 1080p, even better, that's really good. So aim for 1080p if possible, but I wouldn't let it be a deal breaker, especially because you can use external webcams. I used a pretty good one for, for years that was affordable. Um, so I'll link that in the description as, as well as any other links to, to this stuff I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, they're, they're very good external webcam options. Again, something you need to bring with you, but you, it doesn't need to be a deal breaker if the laptop doesn't have a great webcam built in. Okay. So now we'll move on to these specific models. Keep in mind, these models can change. I'll link to the article for, um, about the best laptops for instructional designers that I update more regularly than a video since I won't really be able to up update this video after I post it. So check out the article to see if anything changed. But generally, the Dell XPS lineup is very strong. Uh, MacBooks, you can't go wrong with them and we'll, we'll dive into it in more detail. And the Gigabyte Aero 17. This is like a workhorse kind of one, super powerful, made uh, like kind of like a production laptop. And it's a 17 inch screen, so a lot of screen real estate. But all right, so the Dell XPS 13. So the base model of this meets all of our minimum requirements. Um, it's, it's still a solid laptop, solid machine, looks good, very portable, good battery life. Um, so check that one out. There are a lot of different configurations you can get though with more storage, more RAM, more processing power, better screens. So you have plenty of upgrade options there. Um, this is, I actually had the Dell XPS 15, which is the 15 inch screen. Um, it, it was more expensive. It had a 4K screen though. That's what I got right when I started my master's program and I used that for years for all of my early client work. Just that, that laptop, no external displays or anything like that. So it got me through a lot. Um, it was around two grand when I got it. So. Uh, but I, I, de I definitely don't think I needed the like 4K touchscreen screen. You can get it for at a lower price point, especially if you go with the XPS 13. I um, mean, it is a Windows device, which makes it a lot easier to work with industry tools like Storyline. Um, with some of the testing we've done is, and, and the people we've talked to who use Storyline on Macs, I wouldn't let this be a deal breaker. Like if you are really comfortable with Mac devices, you can, I mean, they're getting really, really good. Um, which is what we're diving into next, but this this could be a plus for some people. You don't need to use parallels or anything like that. But now let's dive into the MacBook lineup. So the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air, anything released after 2020 for these two, after late 2020, I should say, is like really, really good. Um, the MacBook Air with the M2 chip that starts shipping like two days from when I record this looks amazing. So I have the MacBook Air with the M1 chip, which I got in like 2020. That's what I've been using as like my laptop of choice. Um, it gets the job done really well, but the M2 chip, even better. Uh, this, this MacBook Air as well has a 1080p webcam. So the old one just had a 720p, now got a webcam upgrade. So even better for this kind of professional video calls and whatnot. Um, 
The only reason I would really get a MacBook Pro is just because of the larger screen. Uh, the MacBook Pro has like a fan in it, whereas the MacBook Air doesn't, but it's not really necessary. Like the M, the M1 and now in this case M2 chip runs so efficiently that your computer doesn't get like super hot. Um, so some people may opt for the MacBook Pro. You can't really go wrong with either of them. Uh, the base models of these will come with eight gigabytes of RAM, at least at the time I'm recording this video. So if you can go for 16 gigabytes of RAM, that will be even better. And that will make it so that when you are running parallels and running, um, running Windows or Windows programs on your Mac, you'll have even more RAM uh, devoted to the Windows part of the machine. So if you're confused by that, I have a full video about how to run Storyline on a Mac with an M1 chip. So check out that video. We'll, we'll link it in the description. But... You don't, you don't need to, again, don't be afraid to get a Mac for um, instructional design and e-learning work. A lot of instructional designers use Macs. It does take a little bit of setup to use Parallels, but once you've got it figured out, um, it's just like using any other program. So especially if you like the Mac, like quality of life stuff like iMessage, and, and if you're already in that ecosystem, um, you know, there's so many other quality of life benefits that the extra headache or maybe the slightly less efficient uh, workflows and storyline might may be worth it for you. And then storage generally will start at 256 gigabytes of storage, which you can get by with. But if you do have extra budget, getting up to, up to one terabyte um, will be even better, of course. So those are the upgrades I would recommend if you're going to do any. But essentially any MacBook with the M1 chip or beyond and 16 gigabytes of RAM you're going to have a really, really strong computer on your hands that will do you well for years to come for any kind of instructional design work, except for maybe like the most intensive VR work. Um, but I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if the MacBooks could handle that really well also. Okay, and then finally, this Gigabyte Aero 17. So I haven't actually used this before. Oh, one last thing about the MacBooks. If you do have an older MacBook or like you can get one from a friend or something at a lower price point with the Intel chips, those still work really well. Um, my wife would do storyline development on like a 2015 MacBook Pro, I believe. Um, so the MacBooks, even, even older ones can do really well. We'll move along here. So the Gigabyte Aero 17, I haven't owned this or done any work on it. But when looking at these heavy duty Windows laptops, this one was just kind of topping the lists for creatives. So really good if you're planning on doing some of that more intensive work and you know you need a laptop to do it instead of um, building your own desktop, which is the route I took for that kind of heavy work. Um, it also has a big screen. So one of the biggest laptop screens I've seen, 17 inches. So you don't really need an external monitor. Of course, it would help. But check it out. Again, I'll link, I'll link some any of good deals I find for any of these uh, models in the comments or in the description below. So check out the description. I'll link out these deals so that you can you can check these out more. There are also Gigabyte Aero 15s. So if you like this lineup, you can get a slightly smaller screen. That is still very, very powerful. So those are the models. Um, again, if none of those models spoke to you, if they're a little out of your budget, use the tech specs from the beginning of this video or I have a text version of it on my website that I'll link below. Check that out. You can find the best model that works for you. You never know. There are always different deals and whatnot. So I, that's why I wanted to get into the tech specs so that you could really make an informed decision. Um, if you're watching this or shopping for a new laptop because you're becoming an instructional designer, I do have a full video and playlist all about how to become an ID. So make sure you check that out. And then, of course, there's plenty more instructional design and e-learning content coming. So hang around, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, do all the things so that you never miss a video. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for making it to the end of this one.